Thanks, everybody, for coming on a Monday night. Uh, boy, we've got a lot of show for you. We got oh no my Spencer, gosh. we got no Jeff, but we got, we got, got I mean, come on, we got the dream four team. Four empty seats. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got, a, we got a, we got a, we got a provocative guest. We got, uh, we got topics. A, we got topics. <laughs> I'm just going off of what shrab has been telling me over drinks before the show. I'm filling them in, people. Uh, here's, filling them in Here's for the your... bullet points. There's a mega storm coming mega to storm. California that's going to kill us all. Yep. Big, bigger than a big earthquake. Uh, I, I, I thought we just went through that shit. Um, there's a, uh, a man named Ingersoll Lockwood who in 1896 wrote a book about how the Trump family is time traveling, yep. uh, through, All true. through All Tesla true. energies yep. that exploded in the center of the earth. 1900 or the last president, the we, magical journeys. There's a YouTube Baron video Trump. and yeah, I mean, we got to talk about that, but we'll, we'll wait for we'll our guests it. to come out. So we're just we, giving you a t table of contents right now. For the <laughs> <show>. <laughs> what else is going on? I, 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 I look, I'm, I, I, I asked Spencer for permission. Well, I, I, I've been in a terrible mood lately. I, I, I've been very depressed. I, don't, I, 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 I say that assuming that that resonates with a lot of people. I don't know if it's the, the weather or if it's like the apocalypse, uh, but, or, or, but for, in my case, I mean, it might even be, it's just like, like, I, 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 like my therapist has been warning me. You, you, you're arriving at happiness. It's not going to feel like what you're used to calling happiness. It's nope. going to feel like the misplacement of something valuable, which mm -hmm. is your fucking sadness you're addicted to. Right. Don't succumb to the urge to find it. Don't Let it, it be missing. Let it's it your be. sadness. What you're experiencing is going to be this like banal limbo but that's no. going to be like starting this happiness diet. True. Absolutely. Like you know, you're miserable. <laughs> I cried through my smile. <laughs> uh, Do you get depressed? You're oh, you're always in such a great mood. As Do a black man in America, no. Why would you? Oh, I just think about cotton. <laughs> Happy February, by the way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Congratulations! What a month. Over. You know, we're we're so happy with all the new developments. <laughs> We like to say we're creating black history right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure you don't watch my Instagram workout, but I'm like fucking like really bringing the black history thunder. Like, I, Yeah, you're I, like Sojourner Truth. I, I mean, I, I know you're mocking this me. This motherfucker don't know who that is. <laughs> is that black? Damn it. <laughs> is it historical? Yes. Oh, then I'll learn about it then tomorrow. <laughs> you can't keep anything from me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, we're, we're like a little p past halfway through, but I, I'm, and I work out every other day. So I, I'm like, I, 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 I know like five of the amendments now. I, I, kn I know that our, our entire hit, I know that, you know, this is going to sound corny and like uh, white nighty or whatever you call it, virtue signally, but like, like the, the profound thing I'm learning as a middle-aged man, like taking black history seriously, by, I'm reading an hour a morning going like, okay, what the fuck is Plessy versus Ferguson? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I don't mean to make that fart sound like the truth. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Plessy versus Ferguson deserves that fart sound, but uh, Black History, of course, does not. If, if, if anything, it deserves a, 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 a choir of angels. The, the uh, Black History is U.S. history, and vice versa. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, the country is like it's so. I mean, I know that's the, I, know, I know that we know that intellectually, but I'm just sort of like, God damn, this is everything comes out of this. It's like like this weird experiment that we've done, where we were the we were kind of the we were the worst. I, I, I grew up so being bad. taught that we were like, that the U.S. was just like playing ball with this global thing called slavery and that the U.S. was like, okay, I guess we'll do it too. We were, we were no, we were like really into it. And I really honestly did not know that. And I, I thought, and, and, and that like, like, and that then this young country like spent most of its life engaged in that concept. Like this, this, like this God of capitalism that we worship where we're like, there's no Kings here. You can't be born special. Uh, uh, you could, as long as you work hard, you could take over the country. Anyways, get back to work for free. 
uh, hear ye, hear ye, those guys should be able to vote and not be owned. You're like, yeah, I agree. Uh oh, what are we going to do? It's true. It, it, it's it, amazing how much shit we got done despite all the people trying to stop us. It, I, no, like, we really were like, sort of like, damn, we got to build this shit anyway. <laughs> I keep, I keep also putting my, my place other hat. Like I put two different hats on. I put on my 1800s racist hat. It's not that hard for me. I'm like, this should I'm like, be really heavy. I'm like, I, <laughs> it's made of wood and like uh, Danish bones. Like straw. Um, you're not very good at it. It's the 1800s. You're not very good at hat making, but you've got a hat. <laughs> and I keep, I'm, I'm like, oh, these people in the past, they didn't know the future that they could either service or undercut every step of the way. I, I'm I'm a little comfortable supposing that in, there's probably there's like these we we got we got genuine eugenic style racists in the world like people who are genuinely like for real let me measure your skull like fucking like count like 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 no really gen like they're into like the whole like biological aspect of it. <laughs> Those people are are they, they, like like we what we have much in a much larger group is like a lot of like conservative people maybe who are like don't tell me I owe anybody anything and I I just got here I, I don't have to feel guilty about anything I don't want to share my money I don't to, you know and that kind of shit not so much like I think a vast majority of us would agree actually that given w what we're dealing with today we can all look back with hindsight a hundred short years ago and go, oops, that was dumb because what that did is it fucked up for everything for everybody right now. Do you know what I mean? Do you agree or disagree with that dumb white explanation? Um, it's interesting. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's, uh, that's as much as I'm going to get at. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot there. I'm just saying, like, like the Great Migration, like, yeah. like, 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 where it's like, okay, the Civil War is over and the emancipation has happened, and it's like, people are just like doing what you'd expect them to do, which is just like start to fill the rest of the country. Like, get the fuck out of here. Half of them can't get out of here, right. and then half of them are like, where do I go? What do I do? What do I dress like? What should my name be? What is my fucking role in this country? They hid in the woods for decades. They hid in the woods. They hid in the woods, and then they started to form towns. So it got as far as Oklahoma, and then some people got here and there. The smartest thing you could do was go north, which is why you have cities like Detroit. Um, but they didn't get that far out west. But for the most part, they would have to clump together in groups and hide in the woods. So the like, first three, four years after slavery ends, people are just out in the woods, which is crazy. It's, it's, like, it's very, uh, seems like cartoonishly simple. It's tragic. There are, there are cartoons that are tragic, but um, <laughs> they're just living they're literally, in the woods. It literally here's the thing: this piece of history is they didn't know what to do, right. so like they just let people go. This is what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like, so when, some so people when we stay, look back at that period and we go like, so the, 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 as a as a right, running like the white kind of like uh s like panic simulator in my head when I go back in time and I don't have the privilege of being like. Donald Ooh, Trump. I, I'm like living in the future and I'm like, oh, well, of course everybody should blah, blah, blah. Like, who knows what I would have called self care uh, back then as far as like Listen, not, uh, not getting into trouble. You some know pears, I mean? grease, and a little bit of methylatum. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but like, no, everybody was like having arguments about like, well, you're free. You should go away now. Or, uh, you're free, everyone should give you a bunch of money now, or you're free, I hate you, I gotta figure out how to make you hate yourself. Like, nobody was thinking about, everybody was like, wondering what was gonna happen tomorrow, and 80% of it was like, trying to avoid something that they didn't even know what they were trying to avoid, they just were scared. No, all those three thoughts that you just had were actual thoughts that those people had. So, self-hate, making uh, black people hate themselves, for sure. Go go away. <laughs> it was certainly part of the plan. Um, I, I mean, there were abolitionists who, who, who were like, "Yeah, I'm. I hate slavery. We got to get these people out of here." That that was what blew my mind. It was like 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 the people that were. It's crazy. Like it wasn't like people were like 
looking at this room today and going like, so what can we do to make their life like, uh, how can we, how can we, how can we lead to that in a right way so that everyone there is, doesn't have a bunch of like disproportionate disenfranchisement and everything's like kind of like, uh, confusing and in turmoil with a lot of weird debates and uh, uh, sc scary, awkward podcast conversations. <laughs> no, no, it's not scary. It's they not weren't scary. thinking about us. They, 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 were, were. they were thinking they about... Were. They were definitely thinking about maintaining power for th at least a thousand years. There is a thousand year plan. That's what those things are, like the Marshall Plan and all these manifest destinies. Is like when a bunch of guys get together and say, what are we going to do for the next four or five hundred years? People are thinking like dynasty for real. It's, it's crazy because we don't think like that, but there are legit dudes that are like, yeah. I don't even know what I think. Like, I want to know what the equipment, because like, when I think about the future, I picture a bunch of people on a space station like harvesting soy out of a hydroponic garden. <laughs> and and every, everyone looks vaguely like Tiger Woods, probably. No. Like, 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 because, because we're never going to stop being racist. <laughs> You're never going to eliminate racism. You're going to eliminate race. You always it's say first. That. That's the you, first you, thing that's going to happen. You always say that. You always say you're never going to eliminate racism. But remember that the thing that racism is attacking is stronger than racism. So I don't know how that's possible. It's almost like you really cannot beat women. You think you can, but the, the, the initial like, attempt at starting that war has you fucked already <laughs> like that's just a bad idea to begin with yeah. you know and if you look at where we're at right now um they didn't re we didn't really respond the way we were supposed to respond necessarily voting wise <laughs> and we have more women in congress so women yeah. still figured out a way to get past us yeah you know what i'm saying no, that's the same the thing goes of, uh... for the same thing goes for race is that you you will wear yourself out trying to oppress yeah, you will. I, that's a big theme of, of black history that I'm getting into is like noticing that basically like you have lots of people that I like narcissistically I go like, oh, this person's more of a Dan Harmon uh, <laughs> because they just want to be left alone. They're actually born kind of privileged relative to other people that, that may have that complexion. And actually the war came to them because they couldn't, there was these policies. Like uh, the, the, this morning's lesson was about Mamie, Mamie Phipps Clark, you know, this, uh, the, 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 who did the, the doll test that was like part of the Brown versus edu What's the Education. What's the doll test? The doll test is uh, taking the dolls, and you you got you got dolls that have blonde hair and white faces, and dolls that are brown skin and, and black hair. And they fight, and you say to kids that are <laughs> like rock 'em sock 'em robots. You gather a bunch of kids that are two to five years old from segregated schools and from desegregated schools, and you sit them down, and white kids and black kids, and girls and boys, and you you all these control groups and whatever, and you say to the kids. W which one is uh, which one's the bad kid? Which one's the kid you wish you were? Which et cetera, et cetera. These kind of questions and like realizing that racial identity is bored into you by the age of four, and then it's just fucking soldered in place. Like, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, except when you when race is connected to class and and, and worth and stuff. Like, it, who it's okay for a kid to know, I guess, that there's such a thing as race by the age of four. It's really not that mature a concept. It's kind of dopey. Uh, you could you could teach your kid to celebrate it too, right? Which is the deal with Black History Month. We don't focus on the trauma necessarily. We focus on all the fun shit, like stoplights. <laughs> <laughs> You know, great shit like uh, peanut uh, butter. Peanut butter. No, there was. That's a big misconception. Okay, tell me what. What? <laughs> what? Why? Because George Washington Carver just he just wanted to be left alone. Of all the things he did not. Oh, you know, he did wasn't. He, he did. He did, did, did eleven peanut hundred things with with yeah. peanuts, but the peanut yeah, butter. But that, peanut butter. That, that, he, you know that fucking passive aggression. <laughs> <laughs> who who did? Uh, it was. <laughs> According to Eddie Murphy, it was a guy named Thomas Jeff Riley. Right. <laughs> uh, but that's the spin. Is you maybe uh, look at Black History Month as a time to celebrate all of your great black heroes, not, no, the, I, well, not the trauma that they went through to I get know. there. Believe me, there were a lot of times when I was like, like halfway through my workout month, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't want this to be a, a history of racism. But then I was like. Uh, it is, and I'm. That's better for me. Like I, 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 I'm, I am following the trauma, actually. In point of fact, like I'm. Yeah, I'm don't follow and the I trauma. And I was like, I'm going to be obscure. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to uh, forget Rosa Parks because it's like that's curated and all this stuff. But it's like I don't know shit about you know the details of Rosa Parks and stuff. So I'm actually just going in order from Nat Turner Revolt 
to by the end of the month, I think I'm gonna be, I'm gonna fucking bring this thing into the station with like, you know, I don't know, b- b- who, m- m- Bobby Seal or, uh, uh, there's also, or there's also Gerald Lewin though. W uh, it's double L E W. Y-N. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but he's like, he ran Time for the longest time. He's like, huge black executive. He ran executive. Time? That's uh, not, it's the uh, magazine. The whole corporation. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was like, somebody tell him. Like, <laughs> black man ran Time. <laughs> White man stole it from him. <laughs> Don't let oh. them pacify you with shit like that, man. <laughs> time isn't run by a black man. <laughs> It's like that guy in the Hudsucker Proxy. It was their old black janitor in the Hudsucker Proxy. He was basically God. He kind of like is like the janitor in the clock, the clock building. Oh, it's a Hudsucker Proxy. Again. So, do you have any? Do you have any heroes? Was there anybody that you learned about that you were like, and then we got to go? But uh, do you have anybody that you like were like, I didn't know this dude. This is incredible. Like GPS is a black woman. Well, style-wise, I like Langston Hughes, but he's got to be a person who I, I learned the least amount about because he's a poet and I didn't like read any of his poetry. But uh, um, I, li- I, like that, I like that there's debate about his sexuality and like, that it's, like, it's none of your business, you know? And then yeah. he, like, he dressed fancy and he was just like, he was positive. He, he's, his quotes were like, like, hey, if the white man is happy, with the colored man, sorry for my own fashionable language, uh, the, uh, 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 that's great. Uh, if he's not, can't do nothing about that. Like, don't, you know, if the black man is happy with the black man, terrific, bonus, gravy. If he's not, hey, well, you know, you know it's like this kind of like, that, it was, I like, I like that guy because it was like, he, he, like that's what I I need in my like life right now is like overcoming approval addiction, and like the Harlem Renaissance was like like about like I think I'm in my own Harlem Renaissance right now. Brandon is what I'm okay. saying. Okay, <laughs> okay, I will fuck with this. <laughs> I've got I, I, I've been emancipated from a certain tax bracket, and I've like done a great migration up to the urban centers of. So all you need now is a gold chain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to invent new ways to walk. <laughs> I'm going to like I'm going to write poems about nothing but rivers. I'm not going to give a shit if anyone gets it. And people can just speculate about where I put my dick. <laughs> I like that people are like, oh, he's clearly gay, which is pretty important. It's important to the gay people. If he was gay and he was in the closet, then it's important that he was in the closet. Why was he in the closet, et cetera? That's important to current uh, things. So, you know, you don't detract from that. But uh, it's, it's also just kind of funny. You go like, like you, you, well, you're saying because he really, really, really respected black men. So he was there's like, come on, look at this. Look at, look at this thing he wrote about, about the, 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 the regalness of the black man or whatever. And you're like, like, wh- Wow, that's some gay stuff. Like, kind of like, that's that's fucked up. The, you know, you can't, you like you're right there. It's like interesting. He's uh, like, like uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I think uh, I guess that's my hero right now. All right, Langston Hughes. But I really should read something he wrote. You'd love it. <laughs> You'd love it. Yeah. And uh, dust off a little James Baldwin as well, because you would love James Baldwin. James Baldwin, two L's. One L, one D, but Baldwin. (laughs) You would love James Baldwin. All right. Well, let's, I mean, like, as as if by magic. Rob, what do you have to say about black history? (laughs) Uh, I like Candyman. Now, there's a great uh, documentary uh, on Shudder called Horror Noir that goes through, like, the history of uh, black cinema in the horror genre that's actually really, really good. Keith David's in it. He's fantastic. Tony Todd, Candyman is in it. Um, what is the, what is the, the, what's the, the, what do we glean about the connection between blackness and horror? Like, what's the special relationship? Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> See you, well, Herman. Well, they start off with like, like the the like the the, these, bla- the horrible shit. Well, well, they start off with like Birth of a Nation is right. like is like a horror film for black people. It's just like this is 
terrifying because it was incredibly popular and it just it was shown for that it kind of started all these horrible stereotypes right. that we still see to this day. Well, the idea of being what is the deal with the idea of being scared of ghosts and stuff? Like, what's that? Who, is, who isn't afraid of ghosts? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, 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 like we. Like, I guess. Like, I guess white people think it's hilarious that black people are also afraid of ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's like doth protest too much? Like we're scared of black power, and so we're like make them scared, make them more scared of ghosts. I do think there's this thing about scaring the thing that scares you. Well, that they touch on that in this documentary. Is like they go through like, well, first it was like Birth of a Nation where it was vilified, and then, then uh, the black uh, the black actor in like I don't know like Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla or whatever, and then like there's the the the, the, the terrible stereotype of that he's a, a fool and idiot to somebody that you laugh at. And then as we go through into the 80s, when we get to like From Beyond and Ken Forey going, I used to play pro football, man. Yeah. We were, all, we were crazy. all crazy back then. You know, like he set up to be like this unstoppable ex-linebacker cop that when the bat, when the monster takes that guy down, now we know it's for real. And right. there's, they go through that, like the, that it's always to serve the the white protagonist to right. be the magic. Now hold on a second, Doc. Yeah. Are you telling me these wombats from outer space are some kind of yeah. vampire wombat? Yeah. Real good. But Real they good. even they even I skirted skirted yeah. a problematic yeah. line yeah. there, but I think I nailed it. But there was like when there was like a big shift. I think we're all afraid of vampire wombats. <laughs> <laughs> but that role of the black, the yeah. black, uh, the black, the, the the black man stepping out from the corner during the explainer scene in a horror movie of like what we're up against, like the scientist is like, so basically an atomic uh, chain reaction will happen. So now hold on, Doc. In English, are you saying the more these boogans attack us? The stronger they get, like, like, like it's, uh, uh, that's exactly it, Tyler. And then Tyler Bullshit. just recedes into shadow. His job finished. Uh, uh, Boogans. Oh, okay, think. sorry about we that. We gotta fucking, we gotta script that. That's <laughs> There's a Boogans. horror movie called The Boogans from, no, from I the believe 80s. You. Yeah. If not, we should, we gotta make that. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what, that's that's what you accurate. would get if you would be underground too long. You get The Boogans. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no tissue underground. But you know, <laughs> Ain't we no. skipped over, of course, *Night of the Living Dead*, which is like the most, like so yeah. far, it's like oh, not yeah, only ahead of its time, but then not <laughs> yeah. repeated. Where it's like yeah, that was a big, this big low-budget horror movie just like stakes its claim and goes like they, they it, talk about *Night of the Living Dead* a lot. It's like they, they said when that movie came out, that must have been a racist nightmare because you have Dwayne Dwayne Jones is like slapping the shit out of, of white people, killing white zombies, just like he's just telling like. It was just, it, it yeah. was, it's just—it's—it's highly recommended. It's really, really good. But it's such resonant horror. That's the thing. Yeah. That's why we continue to do that with the zombie uh, uh, medium, not necessarily being kind of uh, honestly aggressive about racial politics. For instance, we don't necessarily carry that tradition. But what we've identified as the attraction of the zombie uh, uh, medium is that it traps the living under a microscope. It, it makes them have to deal with shit that we're are already dealing with but are refusing to confront yeah. and uh but you know it, 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 anyways all right let's uh, we've made our guest wait too long he's a professor of african-american women's poetry at uh, howard university no he's not <laughs> he's just a gangly white kid with a show on adult swim please welcome brian weissel mirsky <laughs> Happy February, Weissall. This couch looks so comfortable. I love it that this that you're using like the comfortable furniture as decoration. <laughs> and a guest comes out and sits on this. That is a nice couch. Yeah. You're looking real sharp, man. You're looking I real you. good. I'm not Justin Roiland. No. <laughs> well, did anyone promote that Justin was going to be on yes. the show? Oh, yes. well, that was their mistake because yeah. I saw that coming. J Justin, Justin texted me at like fucking uh, three thirty. Like I, I ate an edible at one. What, what's happening? I thought it would be. I oh. thought it would be over by now. What's going on? My I, hands are getting so big. I can't understand what. 
What am I? Who are you? What's going on? I called Postmates and they came and I just let them drive away. That's how high I am. <laughs> Like he's like 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 this is a sympathetic. The edible, like, oh baby, the trip. are you okay? I'm in somebody's house. I don't know how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> I I was I was just saying in the green room. I was like like you know how like uh I I, I I like like you ever like you have you have friends and like you predict no. th their bad behavior. And then it, if you predict it, you could get like super pissed at them. Uh, I, and it just struck me today while texting with Justin, who I knew two weeks ago was not going to show up tonight. Um, <laughs> I, I, I only didn't know the excuse would be eating an edible. <laughs> I didn't text him today because I, I feared that. But uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. I mean, you're a swell guy. <laughs> You'll Brian, be fine. I mean, I, 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 what I, imagine being him right now. So you know, you, but let's, we were getting them on your side a little bit. I I pounded a, a drink backstage when I found out Justin. Well, you should gonna... quit the show then. You should just bail entirely. <laughs> you yeah, took that... a chemical. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the responsible thing to do. <laughs> now have... Weitzel's like a, a genius that started a Channel 101 and did like the most amazing uh, cartoons. Just some some of the funniest, most messed up stuff. I always loved it. And uh, is that my popcorn? No. Okay. Uh, wow. Steve Levy, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Levy. And now you're on your second season of Hot Streets. Second. Fuck. I'm so sorry. Fuck. <laughs> Having a goddamn panic attack. <laughs> I nobody's, can't breathe. Nobody's ever died from weed. Don't worry. I'm so itchy. Weissall's gonna be so bummed too. <laughs> this is a mess. I never usually do weed anymore, but I felt, just felt so uncreative and usually it helps me with that. But I guess not this stuff. What can I do to help? <laughs> you don't have to do anything. That's why you texted to get permission to bail. You got it. You don't have to feel bad about it, but I'm not going to figure out how to make you feel great. <laughs> I understand. I feel like Mike Tyson is punching my heart. I'm sorry for letting you down, Harmon. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't believe I have to talk to Weiss all by himself. <laughs> I'm, yeah, so. We were at Channel 101. That's where you started this. Please tell us more about it. Yeah, well, I feel actually nostalgic sitting here with uh, Dan and Rob because mm. I, uh, I think a lot of people's stories that, g that got involved with Channel 101, I think a lot of people were in some sort of a personal despair. So I was... Uh, I was very uh, at, a, at a place, a breaking point in my life where I wasn't getting where, where, where I wanted to be. Can we just have two details? Two details. Wiped uh, your ass with a t-shirt. Well, f one detail is, first, I lived in Irvine. That's not a good detail. I mean, if you live in Irvine, that's not a good detail. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to Irvine. Shout out to Irvine Company. <laughs> is that inland? Uh, Jesus, it's Orange County. It's like uh, like like Juggaloos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why would you add, like that's gonna really make the story better? Is yeah. it inland? Yes. Ah. Oh. oh my God! Wow! So many colors <laughs> and music. <laughs> it's inland. It, yeah, oh I, my god. If I take a flyer you, on the idea you. that I don't belong up here, can we stop investigating that? I know I'm a bad interviewer. Is it inland? <laughs> Is it inland? Did anybody think that? Hmm. Is that inland? Nobody. I just, Nobody was questioning. Ah. Uh, uh, is it is it I guess what or I meant was, I, I, You gotta give me some more, buddy. I don't know what planet I'm on. What year is it? I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, come on. Is it Tuesday? Huh? Can I get fries with that? Come on. Is it inland or what? I hey. mentioned Grand Theft Grand Theft Auto Five. Is it is it in the neighborhood that what's his name is in? The guy that stomps the guy's head. The the, the you know. There's like your right. the, the the GTA game where you're the three guys. You know, one of them's one of them. What's the second detail? Is that like a the, the 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 bald 
guy, the creepy guy. Yeah. Hey, come on. Hey, what the fuck? Hey, uh, uh, so, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting so there. So what's detail number two? Oh, geez. Well, and I, watch me make this podcast great by not interrupting. <laughs> Well, this detail for me was bad, but it, it's not necessarily like I feel bad because like I was working in property management. For for me, it's not the job for me. So like I'm not putting down the the job. It's just like I hated my job and I hated my life. I was living in Irvine, and I did not feel like I was surrounded by similar types of people, creative people. And I wanted to be a writer that wasn't working out. I wanted to get into MFA programs that wasn't working out. So I, um, one day I got really high and I was watching Adult Swim and I've always been a fan of Adult Swim. And I saw that um, only two people and I had, had uh, animated Aqua Teen Hunger Force. So then I researched animation software and I just, taught myself how to animate. And when I found Channel 101, it was like, I became a fan of a lot of the creators, like, like I, I, Twiggers and, and, uh, and old baby laser. fucker over here. Oh, oh Daryl. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, we just got out of that drama. You know, Can we just, there's no it. out of it. So you oh, taught yourself how to animate. Yes, I, I, I taught myself how to animate by kind of tracing old cartoons. What was your first software? It was called Digicel, and it was really bad. It was really yeah. unintuitive. And uh, I, I was watching Channel 101. I was a fan of the content. Uh, and I wanted to be a writer, but I was uh, but a, a fiction writer. And I, the thing that sucks about being a writer is nobody wants to read what you're writing. I, <laughs> so Ooh. if you make something that you can watch, yep. You know that is a lot more entertaining. So I t I taught myself how to how to animate and and what was cool is like I was living in in Orange County and I felt you know a bit lonely and I uh, began submitting to Channel 101 and I felt what was your first show? Do you remember? Oh my God, it's terrible. It was it's called Space Goblins. Oh yes. And I think I believe. Am I mistaken in that? Like. <laughs> People, when that came out, people were like, this is the downfall of Channel 101. Uh, I think no. we said that a lot about a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's, there's been a lot of downfall. Hey, Channel, yeah, yeah, Channel yeah, 101 yeah. was like, I mean, I always liken it to punk rock. I mean, that's probably flattering us culturally, but but like with relative to what we were doing, a bunch of nerds making short films, it was, it was always punk rock, so that meant that people, it's like, well, who's doing what next? Oh, this guy just threw his own shit at the audience, and you're like, and so was, every single month it was like, well, that's it then. Then, then now Channel 101's jumped the shark, and then someone else would say, right. no, it's just beginning, yeah. and everyone was wrong. <laughs> it, it was it was just a great place for people. How many to... shows did you do at 101? Do you can you name them all? Oh my god, no, probably about I think probably at least. 10 to 15, I, yeah. I think. How many of those got picked up for uh, <laughs> no, more than one episode? It's it's funny because like Channel 101, there's a trajectory. Usually there's you you begin submitting, you get rejected, you get better. I felt that I was getting better. Uh, and what was cool is because like you're competing against your friends, which is cool about Channel 101, is uh, you respect the people that you're up against and you want to make something really good. And uh, I kept trying to make something better, but I, I think I became... I it was always a win-win. I th like Also, like you, I'm sure all animation shared this. Look, you and Justin and Savan and the uh, like like the, the the guys the the animation crews like they suffered always the same kind of uh, curse, which was that you guys are animators, so you're you're weirder. And so you're making shit that's even more like off the hinge a little bit. And people would tend to purposely not vote for stuff because they they could tell from watching something, that guy's not going anywhere. He's gonna be back here with a new pilot next month. I, I, I always voted like that. I don't know if I ever voted for anything you did. <laughs> and Justin too. Enough. I would yeah. Justin would come in with something, it would just be called skin scrapers. Hi, I'm Johnny Skin Scrape. Uh oh, I'm gonna scrape my skin now. Oh, the skin's off. Oh, hey, hey, what are you doing with that skin? I'm gonna eat it. Oh no, he's eating my skin. Oh no, oh no. And I and, and the audience would just be like, this is the fucking best. Fuck you, mom and dad. 
<laughs> Fuck you, gym teacher. Fuck you, Jimmy Carter, whoever was president. Um, Jimmy Carter. What? Uh, it, it was like shout out to Sprinkles. It was, it, but it was really like it was. It was like fuck you, CAA. Fuck you, UTA. Fuck you, casting directors. Fuck you, um, system. Fu- I, I, I came out here with a steamer trunk from the Midwest or Irvine, and I, like, I'm ready to work. And you would have me just sit out here and put a gun in my mouth, and like, you deserve what you're seeing on screen right now. Uh, that was the that that was the real joy, and I would I would I would never vote for Justin stuff. How many? I, I, how I, many I, I wanted him to make a new pilot. So. Why so? How many like shows did you make by yourself, or were just how many All shows did you pick? Made how many shows did you make before you got picked up? Like how many pilots did you make? Not very you... many, because a lot of people's trajectory was that they would start Channel One Hundred and One, they would get better, and I felt that I was getting better, but not getting voted in. I was. Uh, was your it was like, past the pigs was it was that was yes that, that was like your first that was your house of Cosby's. Mm, I mean, house of Cosby's was successful. I mean, no, past the pigs got voted back a co- yeah, like yeah, several yeah. times. Was that the first no, one? No, got invited back once. Okay, it, it was that was it? <laughs> house cross hot cross buns was well, that didn't get voted back, but no. I thought that was a really good one. I really like that. <laughs> I one made too. this uh, this video called Hot Cross Buns, and I thought that it was really. <laughs> Uh, good, but uh, nobody <laughs> so voted for it. So. Well, let's it's talk so about weird. that. Talk about the relationship between this kind of like willful stupidity. <laughs> like, it's a, like what I like about you and Justin is it, it, like, like somehow it's like, like I get caught in like spirals of overthought. It's the death of all fun things and stuff. And then there's like, so my heroes, like Schraub, Royland, uh, you know, you're carrying that torch. Like, it's like, uh, I'm fascinated by you guys. And therefore, never want to ask you questions because I feel like I'll just soil you with overthought about like, well, wait, are you? Is that bad on purpose or, it, it, like, what is? Don't the, ask that what, question. What is the? <laughs> what is the difference yeah. for you of like, 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 what do you make decisions and go like, I'm going to make this a little shittier? Well, I think that's that's that's, that's funny because that that's <laughs> uh, no, that's you, never <laughs> quite my purpose is to make something I shitty. Think he's but, trying uh, to do is so, well. Don't job high road me in front of these people. <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> you know so your you, style <laughs> is obviously like very organic. Don't, What's the uh, so like, when like, you made this macaroni and cheese, you thought I'll just add these fucking raisins. <laughs> is that what <laughs> you were like? I'm gonna paint this wall and then I'll just smear some shit on it. What is I, that how you do it? Well, I think it's funny because the Hot Street season one uh, came out and people were saying that the animation's bad on purpose. <laughs> but like I was we were really working hard on a small budget. <laughs> so it's 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 funny. Uh, but, but you know they're talk they're not talking yeah. about the quality of the animation. Right, they're talking right. about the blocking, the choreography. You you surely must I don't know, maybe you're not. Maybe you're David Lynch. Like you don't know that you're weird. Is that what we're learning? You don't know you're weird? I I don't know that I'm weird. <laughs> All right. Well, that's yeah. see, I'm glad I asked. I'm a good interviewer. I'm glad I interrupted. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, oh, but it's like, like, I remember like Space Goblins. It was like, I mean, oh, we were God. rolling on the floor. <laughs> there was like a, a process where we watched the uh, submissions and the, it would be like everybody who won <laughs> from last month would be in charge of like who their competitors were basically. And, and uh, so we'd screen all these analog tapes that would be dropped in our mailbox. And uh, I remember Space Goblins. I remember the introduction to your style, which was like characters that are going like, like they're walking into frame and you use the, the tinkle toes sound effect from Hanna-Barbera. And then someone goes, my name is John Spaceman. I'm gonna go do this now. And then like, and then yeah, like I kind of like I would call it like the Doug Lucen Hope Camp, like the, you know, the, the editor from Tim and Eric, who's like like that 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 uh, just pre millennial like fucking like b- uh, late Beastie Boys lateral absurdity. See, I overanalyze shit, and you're like, oh, I'm just trying to my my hardest to do something from the heart, and then everyone's like, Harmon's fucking evil. He called that guy weird. Uh. But you're, you know, you're making, you know, it's funny that the guys like that, 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 that's not, that the, that the, the, the guys like. What was the name of the show? Give me back my baby. What was the, 
Oh, uh, bearded traveler. Bearded traveler, but it, oh, that was it was, he, he was he was like it was like the title sequence was like, and then he would say, "Give me back my baby." Yeah, that yeah, that was yeah, his yeah, catchphrase, yeah, yeah. and it was like a show about a guy who just wanted his baby back. <laughs> yeah, bearded <laughs> traveler is my favorite. But it, what, give what, me back my baby. What was nice is like when I made uh, I made the I made that show, and actually uh, Justin emailed me on the Channel 101 forums. I had never met him before to animate uh, Doc and Marty. But I was working on the on that show on that Channel 101 show. Ooh, um, <laughs> ooh, that's a bitch. bet you're kicking Jeez. yourself. <laughs> bet you're kicking um, yourself because the guys that animate and, and for look him at are the bearded rich. traveler now. <laughs> bearded traveler is amazing. Yeah, give I me like back my the baby. bearded traveler. Uh, and you well, were very nice to me because I, I, I what's met that the, like? I met the what? <laughs> Uh, after I met, I, I met, I think I met Dan before I met Rob. Uh, but after mm. the Bearded Traveler screen, screened, you came up to me, and you said that you you thought that like I had a unique style and it meant a lot to me. So I, <laughs> I, so, you, you, I you've got a unique style. No, I, mean, I think you. Well, you. I mean, you said that you thought that I could eventually have a TV show. <laughs> I, is, I was right. Why a, are you what laughing what a, what a at I know. Well, because I know. I sound, this, I this sound dude like a fucking on, he's cock he's cock to, I, he I comes, I've got a unique style. I just picture me in like a, a crown you. and a robe. Right. Like, <laughs> you have a unique style, boy. <laughs> he's Carry saying, on. He said it meant a lot to him. Just take it. I know. No, I, I, was, I, I wasn't taking it away from... Oh, no. by, by making... <laughs> He doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. What you he think has- he's going? What you think he's going to say now? Of course, <laughs> of course, he's going to be like, "I'm fine, Mr. Harmon." <laughs> it's like you just threw Mean Joe Green's jersey back at him. Uh... This dude comes and he says, "You said something nice to me," and you go, "Ha ha ha!" Uh, I was right. <laughs> Did I mention my dick? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're probably not. By the way, like uh, by the way, this is uh, Weissall. Do you go by Weissall now? Is that like your Prince name? Well, th- that's a good question because all throughout, I mean, no, I've always introduced myself as Brian, and people call me Weissall, which is uh, which is fine. And all, when I was a childhood, when I was a kid, people would call me Weissall. Uh, and in the Rick and R- Morty's writers' room, I would be called Weissall and. Uh, I think I think what it was is that uh, Cass, which was my friend in my Channel 101, the guy who had cast in all of my shows in the early Channel 101 days, called me Weissel, introduced me to everybody as Weissel, but I always feel really self-conscious about that because, like... It feels like branding. Yeah, like, I'm... Speed Demon Johnson. Like, I prefer... My name is Brian, but please call me Speed Demon. Right, right. I, I always feel really uncomfortable about that, but... Uh, I if you call me Weissel, I like it. It's fine, but like I also go by Brian. <laughs> uh, and uh, and the, sh- the the show we're plugging is Hot Streets on Adult Swim. It already had a first season. It had a first You're, season. Jesus Christ! They'll run anything. <laughs> That's the- <laughs> I haven't even seen this fucking thing, but I know one thing for sure. It's got a guy doing tinkle toes and and like something you you're gonna pretend isn't weird on purpose. It's a good show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like, so it's, you, you got picked up for a second season. Yes, you got picked up for a second season. Congratulations. <laughs> I'll really have to I'll have to watch, sit down and watch, watch Atlanta it. and I then used, watch this. I used your story circle. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I, that's always so evident. It, 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 um, I'm really proud how, of the second season of the show. So how do you get it from uh, Channel 101 to Adult Swim? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd show like us to that, know. Uh, show us that ladder. Kate Freund, who is who is married to Rob Schraub. Gross. Uh, Gross. Shout out to Kate. Shout out to Kate. Brave, brave woman. Uh, she, she. We wish she, her luck tonight. She passed my name to some people that uh, that was able to get me. This is really weird because like I got my break on Smosh. Choke up uh, just a little bit. I'm sorry? Thank you. Oh, yeah, got it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, Smosh. Smosh. Uh, Kate uh, gave my name to some producers, and I got the attention of Smosh. Do you know what Smosh is? What is, is? Smosh? Smosh, like... What's it called? <laughs> it's, it's getting more marketing than, yeah. than Adult Swim tonight. Well, like, Smosh? Smosh? 
<laughs> 10 years ago, it was like the premier destination for like teen and tween entertainment. And I honestly, I had made fun of them like for a long time because like I didn't think they were funny at all. And uh, they gave me my break and... <laughs> And it turns out that they were really cool, nice people, and I feel really bad. But uh, uh, so I, I uh, yeah. All right, so we go. Uh, we get, we meet people at Smosh. They 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 love you. And then how does that go to Adult Swim? It it went from uh, the the people at Smosh got me a management and okay. all that kind of thing, and then um, I was already friends with with Justin, of course. Uh, so. My management team connected me with Stupid Buddy, with ro- who makes Robot Chicken, and um, and then we flew Justin, Seth Green, and all of the Robot Chicken people. We all flew out to Atlanta and pitched awesome. it directly to Adult Swim, which Incredible. is pretty cool. Incredible. The Wrecking Crew. That's what I call you guys. <laughs> you, Seth Green, and Justin. There goes the Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew. Why, Weisel, have you heard about this uh, um, this uh, conspiracy theory that Donald Trump is a time traveler? I have not, and I really want to hear about this. Dan, you just, this is fresh in your palate, and it's your show. Why don't you explain? All right, well, there's this author, there's a YouTube video that's like an hour. So you know it's for real. Yeah. Truth. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, it's uh, it's called the last president. Mm. Uh, uh, shit, the last the last president. What a 127 year old book reveals about Donald Trump, time travel, and Nikola Tesla. Uh, and I'm only like 20 minutes into it, and uh, <laughs> but it's like there was a book by an author called what's his name, Inglesock Humpernut. Humpernut. <laughs> Inglesock Humpernut. Some guy wrote a book in like 1896. He wrote a series of books about a character, a bratty little kid called Baron Trump, who uh, he's like a privileged son of like a dynasty, and he his it, father's name is Don. Well, his mentor is, is the Don. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. But uh, uh, the the Baron Trump in 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 his second book, which is called 1900, the f- Future, the last president. The last president. Uh, 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 Baron Trump becomes president, and uh, one of his cabinet members is named Pence. And uh, uh, Baron Trump in the book goes to Russia, mm-hmm. where there's caves mm-hmm. that lead to the center of the earth, mm-hmm. where there's a secret civilization made of silver. Um, <laughs> The guy, the guy interjects in the YouTube video to, to, to talk about, by the way, it's worth noting that in these specific caves that are cited in this story, they have found these weird nanofibers that are like inexplicable and stuff. Like, I'm going to call this guy, like, I really don't want to offend this guy because I really respect, like, I'm listening to him and I'm like, I, I, I like, I, I'm a believer. I'm a believer, man. I like, like, I, I, and I also don't want to offend uh, uh, anyone who has any is is grappling with any kind of uh, chemical uh, uh, complication. Like, uh, I think you just insulted him. <laughs> well, no, I don't no, want to insult I, him. He's not smart, no, and I don't I think, want to insult I, people with brain. No, but I don't think that the guy is like ra- He's not like Harrison Ford is like just like trying to melt my testicles with satellites, you know? Because I saw it in the uh, Amway manual, you know, like, like, like. like when did Harrison Ford tell us this? Yes. <laughs> He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not like unhealthily like like he's not. He's not diagnosable in any way as far as this YouTube video is concerned. He's like this guy is like clearly like kind of a hobbyist who's like into this thing and okay, like okay, share- okay. Oh, okay. You're, s- you're saying no. He's a cuckoo bird, but no, 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 no. I'm saying move. Go on. Continue. Well, I just I just wanted to say because I feel I feel weird when I talk about people that I haven't met and I always want to say to to those people like if, if I'm offending you if this gets back to you you know like and you'd like to come on the show so it's like like oh, like, fuck like, yeah. like like 
like, no, like no, get to the Tesla like whoever stuff. this guy is, if it somehow gets back to you as it as it tends to in the most negative of ways, I really am not dogging on you and not making fun of you. Like we're very interested in your YouTube video. Um, it it is crazy. If it's a, if, if I hope that's not offensive to you. But this uh, book exists it, apparently. It, 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 I'm not going to uh, read it, but it, it I'm sure it it, it apparently. It exists yeah. that it was all this stuff. The 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 Don lives in an in a an apartment on Fifth Avenue in New York. Where well, Trump so Baron Tower. Trump goes into the center of the earth through okay. these tunnels yeah. in Russia, yep. and he accidentally time travels through time as one does. Yeah. Um, the then that ties into a story that may be apocryphal or not about Nikola Tesla who uh, one day walked into a tavern, you yeah, said? Yeah, he walks into a tavern, he's all messed up, his hair's like crooked, and he's like, uh, 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 and a friend's like, no, oh, Tess, man, was Tessie. Tess, what's going on? What's he going says, on, brother? Oh, there was an accident, and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the machine, I was able to see past, present, and future all at the same time. I think I created a time machine. And they went, oh, Okay. So there's that story so, that's out then, there somewhere. Then, but but later on, when uh, te Tesla died, the FBI came in and just took all of his stuff, all of his notes, all of his stuff. They just came in and took it. And apparently, this is the the legend or whatever the conspiracy or whatever is like. They looked through all this stuff and they, and they go, "Bill, do you know what this means?" No, I don't know what that means, Nigel. Uh, and then Bill and Nigel were two guys there. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> and they didn't know; they couldn't decipher what it was. They weren't smart. They said, "Well, let's get some smart, the smart guy to come in here and take a look at this." And the guy they hired was Trump's uncle. As the Holy. as the legend goes, and so so do they have this machine? Uh, yes. Well, the proof is they said that the, the guy eventually says, I think it's that video, he says, well, time travel affects your mind. It screws you up. It makes you, it deteriorates your brain. And that's why Trump talks the way he does. It's because of time, <laughs> time travel. And that's why he misspelled uh, Baron Trump's name because there's two R's in the book instead right. of Instead so 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 like me, I'm sure it's like like you have like Donald Trump. We're just watching. We're at we're at the end of a world that has been uh, retro uh, uh, pre uh, retro pre destroyed by a time traveling nincompoop who and and he 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 probably doesn't even remember how to time travel anymore. So yeah. now he's just hanging so out Doctor and he's who president. So if was an idiot and didn't care about not fucking up time, this is the world we would be living in. Because he's, a, and it kind of explains a lot more than <laughs> if, 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 if this stuff didn't exist. I can now. Uh, it reminds me of the Ford and the, the Lincoln and the Kennedy thing, which is. What's that? What? Uh, Kennedy was killed in a Lincoln. Lincoln was killed in Ford's theater. Right. Both had shots to the head. Um, both fucked Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> S something uh, about their secretary. One had a secretary named Johnson. Yeah. One had a Johnson named secretary. Or yeah. A, uh, yeah. Well, this is what the, the conspiracy theorists say, that the Illuminati or the powers that be or whatever, that they're, they're, they're putting all these clues being uh, out, out in the open because they're arrogant. They're like going, here, look. Doesn't Biff Tannen That's look That's like the from spackle the on the logic look, of conspiracy theories. It's like, like, well, Trump. why would they? Because they're fucking with us. Yeah, man. <laughs> right. Thank God the Illuminati are always just fucking with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> or we wouldn't be able to explain quite all of this. Yeah. yeah. Covers uh, a lot of plot holes. Yeah. I like, I like to ever watch the Illuminati videos where they show like... Um, like just a montage of like celebrities uh, in moments of like mind lapse or whatever. When the reptilian eyes show, yeah. or or oh, no, yeah. well, just oh, like yeah. just like the craziness though, like the like 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 Will Smith's talking and then he and then like to go like, yeah, but what, so when's your next movie coming out? And he just goes like, huh, huh, ha ha ha. <laughs> Right, anyway, and then, and then like, 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 and they just do that. Like, you just watch forty-five minutes of that, because. But it's like, it's like, like I like, I like, it's like, it's like, like I, I think that's a, this, that might be a healthier hobby for a middle-aged man than toy trains. 
Like, yeah, think about the, how the world might be fucked up and engineered to manipulate you. Like, like, like don't don't just recede into a a, 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 a Digicel app and like try to make a squiggly cartoon. All right, let's let's get to know you a little bit. Why so? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think, Why so? What's, you what's your take on all this? Why so? Come on, man. Come on. Oh, Brian. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to a new area. I'm going. Well, I want to talk about Weezer, because like I find myself, <laughs> I, I find myself like, do you find yourself just getting really mad? And you're like, I'm online, and I'm like, I'm listening to this really bad Africa cover, and I get really. That mad. is some bullshit. Can we say that that is some it bullshit? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. it's some bullshit. Don't fucking remake it and take out all the fun. So yes, yeah, so it's like. But also at the same time, like I get really mad at the internet. I get real. I just want to rage, and 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 I, like I fucking hate this Africa remake, and I hate the Rosanna one is even worse, and uh, and I just want to go on the internet and just just talk about it. But at the same time, like everything has become so black and white that like it's like Weezer fucking sucks. They've never been good. And then I was oh, like listening shit. to the, Wait, 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 wait. Well, well, Dan, fired. can you go back to talking about the baby stuff? <laughs> I'm trying to get away from that. They're gonna fucking can. burn the building down. <laughs> uh, and then like you're watching and then like I was in the my car and I, and the sweater sang came on and I was like, this song's pretty good. They're not like complete shit, you know? So it's like every, every, nothing's gray anymore. Everything's just like Attack or defense, nothing is kind of. And also, like fifteen years from now, like it, 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 you just don't know. Like somehow, some way, your opinion about Weezer it may somehow like dent you, right? Sure. Or am I, str- I, I? That's not what you were leading to at all. And I'm just I, like and stuck in my own like fucking weird world over here. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think I'll continue to dislike Weezer. But it's not that they're completely evil, horrible people that need to be destroyed. It's just they made, they made a song that, and maybe an album, <laughs> several albums that suck oh, really shit. bad. <laughs> but they're um, not like evil people. All right. Okay. What is the biggest change for you since, this is a weird question, but since you did sort of quickly move up the ranks, what was the hardest thing to get used to? For, well, Dan, for Dan, it was being famous. For you, <laughs> what is it? He's 48, by the way, and... Uh, okay, sorry. I'm pretty, pretty close to that. Because we just found out that's feasible. <laughs> but it took a little while. It but, took a but, while but, for But then me, once it started, it... I'll say, like, when I got my first job as a writer, I was 37, and yeah. I was Rick and Jesus Morty. Jesus Christ, you really are really old. Yes. Yeah, so, like, that was my first job, was my first professional writing job was Rick and Morty. Uh, and I was 37, and I think my the the no matter what age you are, when you go into a writer's room and you're brand new, you're inside of your head. So I think like uh, you're in the writer's room, you're like I haven't talked enough today, or you get kind of get inside your head uh, too much. And now uh, toward the end of the season, I felt like, all right, I know how to contribute to the show. And now I'm on a show, and I worked on a couple other shows after that. And then Hot Streets, I'm running the writer's room, and now I see all the bad habits that I was doing. Like, give me one. Like, uh, it's like you're waiting for your turn. You're like, somebody is is, talk, is, is giving an idea, and, and they stop talking, you're like, and then you go backwards five minutes ago. Because you're in your head, you're like, all right, if Rick and Morty, like, if the, if they if they did this, then um, that was a great pitch, right? Mm. Um, it, it, you get inside your own head. I yeah. think is the no, problem. I get it. And I get it. so when when I became uh, the showrunner for the, my show, I saw that happening with with I've seen that happen with other and other not just hot. I mean. Jesus, the writers on Hot Streets are incredible, so I'm not I'm not talking bad about them. Um, but I've worked on other shows since Rick and Morty, where like you see that happening, and you want to. I think the key is to just succumb yourself to the show and to uh, embrace what is happening and to build up what is happening from other writers. You want to help them because you're, the greater good is the show. 
But when you're a new writer, I think the problem is you get inside your own head and you just want to, like, I've got my own ideas. I want to mm. put my own voice in the show. I think that's okay. Okay, I, 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 I envy you if what you are achieving is like an actual exercise where people are just keeping the shuttlecock in the air, and so you're not even bothering to like, but, but um, if that is one extreme and the other extreme is nobody listening to anybody and they just have their own ideas, somewhere in the middle is kind of like, yeah, as long as you don't shoot down other people's ideas, that's what makes me just go, fuck you. Like, 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 I, like, like that means like, like you're sitting there listening to other people's ideas and trying to figure out why they won't work. Dude, right. I, ideas don't work because God hates us. We're here to beat him. Uh, like, 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 don't, like, like, don't, I, you're on the wrong side of the law. If you're sitting here trying to figure out how that person's pitch isn't going to work. I don't care if it's about boogers or fucking whatever, like support it until it dies of overindulgence. Um, but ideas are a gift, yes. but I think it's okay. I mean, I've well for my money and my shitty writer's room that probably works much slower than yours. It, it, like, I don't mind people ratcheting back a little bit and going like, well, listen to that person talk for four minutes trying to get their idea out. And I, but what I wanted to say about what we were talking about is this other thing. Like, I don't, I just so you know, I don't, I never saw that as a sin. I would expect that. I, I don't, I, I wouldn't want people to leave shit behind in a ditch just because right. Timothy well, like decided to make everything about Wizard of Oz. I agree with you. And I would say like ideas are a gift, but I felt like when I was working at Rick and Morty, I felt that I was too inside of my head. Right. You uh, were, you, you caught yourself not listening to other people enough. Is right. what you're saying. Right. And when, um, I've worked with people, not just writing, but like I, uh, season two, we were able to kind of, uh, I guess the, the problem going from season one to season two is season one is I don't quite know how to be, how to run the show. So I've got certain lieutenants that I'm listening to and, um, and they're just going to stab you in the back and go do a fucking Marvel show. about Okay. Loki. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh my you God. Did, you be are, happy you... for your friends for once. <laughs> Be happy. We're yeah, all you... fucking trying to figure it out. Somebody has, something nice happens to somebody, and you you gotta tear them down. You gotta tear them apart. Jesus Christ, what's uh, wrong with you? I just decided Waldron was there for two weeks. I like I gotta I gotta I gotta I gotta train people slower. <laughs> Oh my God! People are like, God I, I, damn! I got the fire. He did gotta... the work. He got the job. Be happy for him. What? Don't high road me. What are you oh, doing? Okay. Right. How dare you? No one's happier for him than me. You, uh, you know, a little bucket. bit because you're running your second season, right? That's that's going to be your show running. Do you, what would you tell him? Because it's uh, you. What would I been... tell who? Uh, Loki. Loki. Oh. What would you tell Brian? Because you, he's you, on season you've two. I can't tell him anything. Well, he just said he's not so sure. Is there a piece? Because I like uh, it's cool about this show is that you do talk about the process, and I do think people want to know how it all gets made sometimes. Yeah, but it's I mean, it's a goddamn nightmare. I, 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 I for, for me, the central thing about it is always uh, the uh, wondering when you're supposed to be overthinking and when you're supposed to be underthinking. Uh, especially on a show like Rick and Morty, where it's like, you know, to me, very clear that it's the 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 key recipe is that it's a swirl of two things that don't usually work well together, which is like willful stupidity, uh, and uh, and and absolute like passionate like overthought. I, I, I and. I so we, we sit in the writers' room and we we I don't know we try to break stories but we also like have these at the top of every season we go let's do things real differently this time around you know let's 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 escape this process and let's do another one and it's just this because two to three was a whole different room yeah I mean they're always they're always they're always real different rooms and you're it's everything's the experiment is never over. You're never comfortable. You're never nailing it. You never, it's like, you just dream of this day. It's like the myth of retirement, like the myth of the writer's room that like, ha like has its shit together where you're like, okay, well, we know what our job is. We make pizza, right? People like the cheese, like the tomato sauce. <laughs> oh shit, all of the unexpected things have to do with our babies and medical emergencies. I gotta go home at four instead of five. 
it it never happens. It's always like, okay, you're you're behind schedule, and and what? Why did this story about a banana peel turn out to be our Citizen Kane or Ishtar? Like, like what? What are we doing wrong? It's funny because like whatever brings you like joy in in the room. Like for us, we were in the, in our writer's room. Um, man, I don't know how to talk about this, but like. Uh, I guess there's this there's this uh, sexual fetish of people liking uh, like cartoon horses like <laughs> farting okay. farting on people's faces. <laughs> We're all what, hanging what? in every word, waiting for you to. The joke is bringing it back to the thing that everybody. What's the What's the term? What's the term? What's the what? Like if I wanted to Google, I don't know what. <laughs> It's not what I mean. Like that was just. It's like you know, we we in our in our room we were watching like for us like you just follow whatever's the joy is of of the moment and for us in our well I like horses yeah (laughs) but cartoon horses are even better if you like you know if you are aroused by My Little Pony's farting in faces that's totally cool but like it's some fetishes are kind of amusing at the same time like what. (laughs) <laughs> like the ponies farting in faces. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Pokemon is uh, a big on the farting on people. So, like the videos start with like either the My Little Pony or or the Pokemon slowly approaching backwards to the cre- to, to the character. Right. Either. And I feel uh, like they I feel like they start with a lot of self hate. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so how, get up on that mic. So tell us about that get room. In, get closer. <laughs> on the mic. Tell us about that room. So we were like, we have to write an episode, but it has to be serious. Like, if the pony farts in your face, you die. So it's like the things that make you laugh in the room oftentimes will uh, help create that story. Yeah, I don't know. That completely went away from what we were talking about. Yeah, I don't I mean, look, I it, it's a conversation about a thing that is so frustrating for the same reason that it's like the conversation about it is almost tedious, let alone inaccessible because it's like that's the problem. And I've always agonized about this cuz I'm like hopefully going to retire soon and um I spent my life um working, I'm going to go ahead and say it as hard as a carpenter works with wood, but with stories. (laughs) Oh, fuck you people. (laughs) No, but I mean, like, I've said it over and over again. It's like, the fucked up thing is that from the the beginning of of the first moment when two people got two two pieces of wood and said, let's make a porch, like, the first time... (laughs) Don't don't act like I don't know architecture. Uh, The first time that they figured out... (laughs) <laughs> Just two pieces. <laughs> They're gonna start on the porch, Brandon. You don't. That's the fucking steps. <laughs> <laughs> the first. How do time... they know what it is uh, if right. they've never made it right. before? Let's That's make a my porch. Point. That's my point. What's a porch? What? Well, do you got a piece of wood? That's my yeah. point. Well, those will be the steps. So we gotta get some more wood to make the porch. You can get online right now and type <laughs> "I need to make a porch" into Googlepedia. And you will be able to draw on 5,000 years of people making shit with wood, right? Because right. every time a joist gets invented or discovered, there's like racks of shit at Home Depot and there's Time Life books and there's people sharing notes. And, and when things don't work, they don't make the cut. That's right. And they, and, they, and they evaporate. So when you have something as simple as like making a house that people live in or making a porch swing, you have this like mimetic evolution where people yeah. compare notes and share what they've learned. And with breaking stories, which to me is agonizing and no one wants to do it, I don't want to spend eight hours a day knowing only one thing, which is that I don't know what to do next. It's like, what? fuck you, man. I'm entitled to more than that. I want a Sunday and a hand job right now. <laughs> okay. 
like, 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 like when is story? It's like, like my, my, my career is like propelled by this like will to laziness. Like that I never, I'm like, there's gotta be an easy way to do this. Joseph Campbell must know. Okay. Jesus Christ. This guy talks a lot. Oh fuck. God damn it. Okay. Maybe if I break it down, it's like, I never, like, like I can never figure it out. I can never work smarter, not harder. It, it, it my that that's why I'm so frustrated also by the technology involving interactive whiteboards, which I know we have, but we don't have because there's no demand for it. Like we, sh there, there's we're in the golden age of television. One hundred and forty-four pieces of wood <laughs> is what it takes to make a porch. <laughs> no, to run a writer's room, uh, to make a. <laughs> what do you think? What were we talking? Yeah, all right. We should be able to know, like, how, like, I, 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 like, if, if I, if I could go back in time through a Russian tunnel. What? And, and Talk simply to the just be people. able to access from 2009 onward all of the work on every single community episode and Rick and Morty episode, like, just be able to look at just the strokes on the whiteboard. It, it, it in order and all that stuff to be able to like pour over that with the same amount of facility that we can pour over our baby's photos, our, our weddings and stuff like that. Like we have the digital technology, but we don't, we, we, we somehow regard this idea that writers work in writer's rooms. We regard it as if it's some kind of like, there's like this blind spot there where we're like, well, that's none of your business how we get our shit done. But it's like, wait a minute, man. We're all working towards like a common goal here. If you have figured it out, how you can do it in two minutes, then we could start accelerating our <laughs> our television culture, right? Like, 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 it's true, but all artists do that. All artists hide their process, which is interesting that you let us in. That's why I always, always try and push because yeah. if you, you use joists, but the truth of the matter is with carpentry, the joinery is hidden. So like some dudes are not using metal at all. Some dudes are using just pegs. Some dudes are just using a dowel. Yeah. There's always this thing of like, if you look at this stage right now, you don't see a nail because carpenters don't show you how they make stuff. That's the game. That's what the masons are built on. Is the, the entire You're right. Well, the of, masons, that was their first impulse. It was like, wait, oh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, we know how to make a, a doorway not fall on your head right. when you open the door. Well, fucking, <laughs> how about we keep this from people until the next exactly. election? Yeah, you're exactly. right. That's their first instinct. And to be honest, the, even when you're painting, you're trying to use paints that nobody else can get their hands on. If you, have I don't to like alter that themselves. impulse. I don't like it, and I don't think you're it's because I'm a noble new. person. I think it's because I'm so fucking much more narcissistic than other creatives. I actually like in my head, and I, I think this is changing now. I'm 46, but I think I'm like. I think in my 25 year old like Max Landisy brain, I think that not like, this weekend, <laughs> not uh, this weekend. <laughs> the I, I I think that like my goal has always been like let's just eliminate all this fucking shit that has nothing to do with talent and then just have a fucking dick measuring contest about it's just like who came out of the womb more special. What, what, what's with all this Michigan getting in the way? You know, like like how hard it is to figure this and that out. But it, like, I don't think that way anymore because it's like, it's like it's like digging through a cotton candy mountain, like looking for a, a you know what bad writer. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Where was that gonna go? <laughs> I, what I could use is a good room full of very talented collaborators <laughs> that I wish I knew how to use. Not better. here. <laughs> Did you go through a process, Weissall or Speed Demon, as we, we, we've come to call you? Like, I, my big lesson on community was that I threw this, like, idea of, well, I don't want to be an asshole, so I'm not going to make them do anything, which is abusing them. Like, did you, I don't know how big your writing staff is. We had a pretty small uh, writer's room. We had, I think, like, five writers in all. So did you ever do this thing where you're like hold up and going like, I'll just write the script. You guys eat some M&Ms. Um, it, it was uh, usually, I mean, like even on Rick and Morty, I think I felt like the first couple hours is just kind of like dicking around, you know? And then you just eventually, actually like I, I used to, I was listening to Harmontown and then when I got to Ugh. Rick and Morty, <laughs> it was just kind of like dicking, it was kind of like, you know what happens on the show? <laughs> yeah, um, I think there's a little bit of warm up that occurs. Yeah, yeah. So you're just kind of having fun as a as a group, and sometimes you'll find something that sparks pleasure, and you try to find 
what that pleasure is and how to get to it and how to, like I think in season two it was like get Swifty the song we all thought it was funny like how do we write a story for that because that brings us a lot of pleasure yeah yeah <laughs> yeah never nailed it there's no formula don't know how to do it yeah uh, yeah, yeah there's, do there's... you think that's why artists and carpenters try to hide what they do because if we knew if we saw like to to me like i always tell my parents or people who aren't in the business is that if you saw what i did if you looked at what i would do you would go you're doing nothing you're yeah. just fucking around all yeah. day but it's not true i mean like when you're not writing you're thinking about writing or you're outlining or you're writing or whatever or you're 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 doing a lot of you're basically doing it wrong until you do it right and you do it wrong i mean the funny longer. thing is yeah i know that yeah. i know that like ha like like i have a I have my older brother's voice in my head when we're taking 2 hours to get started cuz we have so much to talk about and it's like, wait, when are you guys going to ever do anything for a living except sitting there fucking jerking each other off? And then, But then I also, the same voice in my head, as soon as we get started for the next four hours, is like 20 minutes into it, I know every ghost in my head, like that I feel all of them snap. Like, and they go like, this is ridiculous. Why are you thinking about this for so long? Just have fun. It's just a good show. He f has a booger ray. Every lesson you've ever learned is about having fun. Why are you ruining it? Stop ruining it. You're ruining it. Stop. You're overthinking <laughs> it. And then, and then you go like, I'm not going to overthink it anymore. I'm like, what if he just had a booger ray? And then you're just like, okay, he's got a booger ray. Like, oh, it's the right, the, right the scene. He's got a booger ray and he's got a booger Ray and you just read it and everyone goes Pfft. and maybe sometimes you even just go all the way through therapy and you go like fucking just keep it moving he's got a booger ray draw it draw it draw the booger ray and then they like draw it and the musician goes like oh, booger ray theme here comes the booger ray and then the editor like pieces it together and everyone's got bloodshot eyes and they're like oh, here it is and they press play and it's like hey Rick Morty whoever you are I got a booger ray I'm gonna pull it out <laughs> here's the booger ray zap 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 oh geez rick you really shot good with that booger ray yeah i did morty didn't i i really did i really shot good with that booger ray but i always do it 100 100 with that booger ray 100 booger ray 100 years.com booger ray oh that's great yeah that's great morty that's great that's great three minutes later and and then, and then they press pause and 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 now you got two eps at the top going like oh <laughs> Seems to lack a little something. <laughs> yeah, but they don't want to call it uh, uh, the part where we agonize in the writer's room because that makes everyone mad too. Uh, let's figure out how to fix it. It, it. I I don't. I haven't figured it out. Well, I think because I'm working on a like 11 minute show, I can we can do the book Booger Ray episode. You know. And it's not, it's not the 22-minute where... Hey, man, he's stealing your idea. <laughs> yeah, we, it's season two, episode one is the Booger Ray episode. <laughs> we stole it, and it's coming out. Well, let's, uh, let's punish Justin, like, because we got, we, we, we'll, we got Golden Fold's voice here. I'll do Rick and Morty. Um, you can be the voice of uh, Celestra, Reason. the Ice Queen. Um, and, uh, Weissall, you do, uh, 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 Rubik, the amazing cube. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll improvise an episode of Rick and Morty. Okay. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> oh, shit, we lost our golden fold. Hold on. Let's get, get them, get them lubricated. <laughs> Just like at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there as much drinking going on? in the writer's room? Uh, not at Hot Streets. <laughs> I don't drink at work. <laughs> you stink before at two. Did, uh, uh, sorry, before we start, was uh, Rubik kind of like the... Uh, he was an did amazing cute. Did he sound like Howie Mandel from Gremlins? He kind of did, yeah, but you don't, you don't have to do He's that. He's more of an Emmanuel Lewis kind of a character. Oh, oh a, a connoisseur. 
I mean, I, I was am. just riffing something. But, <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, no. like, I am. Uh, okay, fade in. I Interior, uh, Rick's garage uh, day. <clears throat> uh, Got to put this uh, transistor inside this uh, compactor. Hey, Rick, uh, you think you could give me a, a new prom suit for the prom tonight? Morty, I'd rather eat glass than ever indulge in your adolescent fucking rituals, you piece of shit. Everything you believe is a lie. Uh, okay, well, his mom said uh, 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 that you, uh, your, your mom says a lot of things, Morty. Uh, she said yes when your father said, would you like this in you? Uh, I think that <laughs> says enough about her. Um, if, I, if I ever dabbled in time travel, believe me, uh, a lot of problems would be solved. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Rick, are you extra drunk? Yes. Uh, I just, all I wanted was an extra uh, prom, prom suit. <laughs> All right, Morty, look, fine, here. Uh, th th this serum, if you pour it on yourself, it'll turn your clothes into whatever your mind thinks is important. That's the B story. It's low stakes. Hopefully it'll generate a lot of bits with, I'm saying summer. Uh, you know, she's on the payroll, gotta use her. Get, go, 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 like, Go talk to your sister about clothes while I uh, deal with the, what I'm working on on this bench. Uh, Goldenfold enters the open garage. I smell poop. <laughs> hey, uh, Goldenfold, uh, uh, can you uh, can I use your finger for a second? Uh, I need an extra hand. I, I, I was just extra mean to Morty, and I, I need some assistance. Uh, sure, but you're not going to pull my finger, are you? No, 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 no. I, I have I'm, a flatulence problem. I'm way more sophisticated than that. Just put your finger here and uh, hold down that button, and no matter what you do, don't wish uh, 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 that wishing was impossible. <laughs> I was just wishing that wishing wasn't impossible! Whoa! Whoa! Ah! Ah! What have you done? You created a new you... story! Oh, no! Ah! Wow. Wow. Welcome. Welcome to my domain. What the fuck? Shit, my portal gun. I left it on the toilet again. There's no need for portals. <laughs> <laughs> or guns here in my domain. Please have a seat. Shit. <laughs> Two chairs out of nowhere. How did I do that? <laughs> Please it's tell me that you want to probe me. I want to probe you. Is that yes. how you say hello? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Smith House in the B story, hey, uh, Summer, uh, Rick told me to uh, occupy you in a scene that has to do with me pouring a serum on my clothes. Hi, I'm Rubik's. <laughs> When you poured that serum on you, it m created me. <laughs> and I am here to stay, and Rick and Morty. Oh, jeez. Rick must have given me a serum. He must have mixed him up. And, <laughs> and uh, now, I got a, now I got a Rubik. If you put me... To shape correctly, I'll grant you a wish. <laughs> well, that's no problem at all. I can do that for sure. I saw. I, I watch PewDiePie do this all the time. I think my generation. I watch. I watch videos about people reacting to videos about Rubik's cubes. So here we go. I did it. I made you the same color on all sides. I grant you one wish. Whoa, <laughs> Jessica. Cut to, back to Narnia planet. So, that's so, when I found out I was adopted. That's a, that's such a, I'm, thank you for sharing that. That oh. was a wonderful story. That was really great. Here, have some more ice muffins. Oh, delicious. <laughs> hey, Ice Queen, how come my, my, my body is turning into uh, 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 ice? That's because you're sweating too much. Are you... Are you hiding something? Is he hiding something? Oh, eh. Golden I think folk. you're hiding something. Why don't you why don't you have a seat before you completely freeze and kind of just let something off of your chest just like just like your friend did here. Just just let something off of your chest. Let it off. Look, let we really got to get out of here. I uh, Oh, oh, there's something about this 
Narnia mushroom that's making it easy to release my thoughts. Oh, my father. Oh, my father. You just said something about your father. What, 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 oh. let's, let's, oh. let's probe that. My father <laughs> took me on a fishing trip. Oh. oh, he threw me out of a boat. I didn't know how to swim. Oh, I was sucked down into the muck. Uh, I had a regular eyebrow. <laughs> and regular hair. And then a caterpillar climbed onto my forehead at the bottom of the lake. <laughs> Gave me my trademark unibrow. And then my hair became spiky as I moved up through the water, which was next to an alcohol plant. And so I became an alcoholic. That's why I drink, and my clothes, the color was bleached out of them by the uh, alcohol in the water. So I came out of the <laughs> lake uh, looking like uh, mm. all of the qualities that my mm. character has. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's, that's fascinating. We'll be right back. <laughs> Bengay foot cream makes your foot less... Hurdy. Hey, my name's Ben. Let me cream on your foot. Uh, oh, fuck. Oh. Reach for the solution that counts. Oh. Reach for Ben Gay. Oh, oh that pony. This Sunday at the Toronto Truck Show. All trucks all the time in Toronto. There's the Daisy Plus 40 foot yacht. Come meet David Hasselhoff and the cast of. And Whoa. I'll be seeing you at the park. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have doing my own taxes, Itis? <laughs> my name is Tax Johnson. I'll do all your taxes. Call me. I'm Spanish. Abrogado. <laughs> we now return to Rick and Morty. Oh, shit. Fuck. Oh, Ice Queen. This is so good. God damn. <laughs> Fucking me in the butt with that icicle strap on. Meanwhile, in the B story. <laughs> oh, geez, Summer. Oh, God. All right, all right. Let's put it. We'll wrap that up there. Right, right. That's just to. We just trying to punish Justin for not coming. Like he think he thinks you know having too much edible is uh, bad. Yeah. This is. Is this canon? Is this? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I have. I have at least fifty percent. Uh, I would agree. The right to say. <laughs> That's it. Now yeah. we know how Rick got his uh, eyebrows. <laughs> and actually, there's Set one thing. Stone. There is one thing I wanted to talk to you about. Like, oh shit! Real behind the secret, secret. Here we go. Secret, secret, Do you secret. think like because I, I've, I've been, <laughs> been getting into like anime lately and like. Uh, I know. <laughs> I know. And then. But and like, giggled and giggled at the same time. <laughs> Anime. But like, what do you think about like giving too much information about a character? Like, because like I, I've been, I've been real uh, tired. I've been tired. I'm. <laughs> but but what do you think about this? Like, I just, think it's like, a terrible giving, idea. Yeah. I I'm not being glib. I don't. Think, I I because I think that that's a. Uh, 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 our our friends don't have origin stories. I, like we learn things about them that make sense when we look at them as a whole, but we don't we don't learn the as much as we enjoyed the River Phoenix opening to Indiana Jones the third movie. It also simultaneously we were watching Indiana Jones die, like we were getting too much information. It it, it that, that's how I feel about that stuff. When I, know I it, when I was watching season three episode one, what I was what I was feeling is that because there had been so much uh, so much talk about. Uh, what had ha happened to Beth's mom, that it had become a bigger mystery than it maybe, like, because it ended on a cliffhanger. Uh, to me, like, when episode three, or season three came out, episode one, and you're like, it's all about Szechuan sauce, which I thought was hilarious. But, like, was that to diffuse that whole, like, because, like, people are w wanting... Yeah. 
uh, I thought that yeah, was- you have to undercut any efforts made in that area. I think you provide both. You give people the option. I think there's like 35 different categories of TV viewer. There are people who relentlessly uh, catalog. There are people who 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 hate what they love. There are people who ship. There are people who hate shippers. There 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 are you you. you but all of them represent like some small part of what you experience when you watch a TV show. And I think that the response thing in, in terms of craft personship you're welcome ladies uh, <laughs> mid word mid word inclusive 90 degree fucking move didn't even and didn't stop okay, the show and okay. point it out don't either don't break your arm <laughs> happy don't, february don't break your arm pat yourself on the back fucking woke woke <laughs> af hashtag <laughs> Um, oh my god! <laughs> I love that your hashtag is backwards. <laughs> I put the I put the hashtag on the end. Motherfucker's gonna die. Hashtag. Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, what the fuck was I babbling about? I don't know. Oh um, god. We're in the black. Yeah. Giving uh, too much. Uh, giving too much backstory to a character. Oh yeah, yeah, why yeah. You yeah. Not. It's, not, it's not about willful denial of it either. I, I don't. It's just. It's. It's about respecting everyone's right. Right is a strong word because I hate everyone and they don't have rights to material. But well, you've said this before. It's a, and and maybe I've read this other place in other books I've read about writing. It's like start the story as far into the story as and let as it you be can. Doctor Who, which Doctor yeah. Who evolved naturally, but they accidentally found what I think is the way yeah. to survive post Golden Age TV with a franchise, a modular franchise. Now look, yeah. serial TV is great. I love I love Russian Doll. I love I love it. I love it all. I love that Groundhog Day is a genre now. It's it's fine. Um, like like I <laughs> I will I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna end up being serial. I'm too old. It's too late for me. Like like modularity is like that feeling of like that's my my family. I can come home to them anytime I want. They're always there. Aunt Jackie's always a fucking drunk. Maybe there could be an episode where she's not a drunk. If that fucks up your show, it's because you didn't design Aunt Jackie's character right. Like, because nobody's character is that they're drunk, he said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 whatever, but but like I mean I yeah I mean I, like you triggered a thing that could make me talk well, for three hours. Oh, I but, actually want to talk. Like, uh, yeah. uh, what do you think? Because I think like one of the greatest black holes of drama right now is the mystery box theory of, of storytelling, where you keep teasing the audience and then you at the end it's just a bigger mystery. It's kind of like lost. Uh, it's lost. Yeah, I do, but that we we'll see where that goes. Like, so yeah. I think that's like painting yourself in a corner. It's, it, there's a there's a tweaked version of mystery box, which is mystery buffet, or the, where you keep opening it up more and more. You keep giving people more and more options. You don't. You never deny anything. The first rule is that if it's canon, it's canon. You can't. You don't move back on it. You never say, "Well, you you perceived that wrong. We didn't." You know. You just keep adding more things. You're like a you're you're hosting a party. You go you go like, hey, who who wants to get high? They just invented ketamine, I, so I have it now. Like, you you always stay on top of everything and just, like, like, there's a room in every house for every type of person. There's a room in your party for people who hate parties. That's when you're, that's that, that, like, like, that's if you're a good host. Yep. Like, 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 there's just plants and a dog in here, man. Just relax. Like, I, I, I hate everyone else, too. That's cool. <laughs> Like and yeah, I, I so, so like there's it, 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 it that's it, 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 no no like um, ooh, this is gonna pay off one day. Like I would hate to make that promise. You um, know, oh, hang on, everybody. Ooh, uh, there, there's the one armed man again. Well, I'm gonna I get really, it. <laughs> it's gonna also, definitely it, hang on. That's why you should enjoy the show. You don't you don't want to cross that threshold of like this is why. It seems like it's a little disingenuous. It's its own trick, which is to trick people. I think when people sit down and they want to hear a story, they want to hear a story and they want you to go from A to B. If you go, but I can't, I feel like that's like the that's... equivalent of throwing sand in a fight. Yeah. Like it, 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 I feel like when, when, when broadcast television started competing with cable television, that's when serialization and cliffhangers started happening. That's when event television started happening and there's good, good stories that emerge from it. And there, but overall it's like, like what? Oh, how what, how, what, how can I compete with American Idol if I'm just Knight Rider? Well, right. the answer is Knight Rider has to go. I just committed incest with. 
to be continued. It's like, like, like you have to tune in. You have to. You have to. We're not even going to finish making television until you tune in, yeah. which I think is like not. That's but I not think I think like w- like Breaking Bad did it like really well. Like that's like like that to me was like binge TV before Netflix made it. A yeah. Thing. I hated the I, ending. Well, you. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> I would, I would say like I mean, shows. I mean, yeah, I guess it's. It, yeah. I like shows that in the finale of that season they kind of tie up the mysteries, like the the wire. Like when you get to the end, it's like that's the season. Right. Like you you feel nourished. Like that's the story, yeah. and if it goes down, it feels good. I, I like that. Like both Law and Order and X Files, where they intersect, is that both shows. Um, delineated between mythology uh, uh, energy and um, modular energy. So Law and Order was the extreme of it because it's like they don't want to lose a single viewer to the idea that you have to know who these people are. So they just let you get addicted to Jerry Orbach. Like, of course you should. He's a he, what? What is a what is a character? He's a raincoat. He's an eyebrow. He he. It, it, give the actor some credit. You know, yeah. like 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 that's what they're, they're going to fall in love with. So just let him let, like write your stories. You're a writer. Like 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 give these people something to do. So, so that if you watch one episode, it's like smoking a crack rock, which is Yes, connected to all other crack rocks, but not necessary to smoke that crack rock before that crack rock. That's the difference. It's like crack is the goal. So, uh, <laughs> and and I love like I always watch, like I watch I watch Law and Order and syndication on TBS, and I was like. I was like, I got so fucking hooked after like five of them, and I'm just like, God damn, I love Jerry Orbach. God damn, I love this and that. And like, never anything, no plot, nothing except for the one self-contained plot of the homicide that happened and the solving of it. And then at the end of the uh, season, um, the lieutenant, uh, like Jerry Orbach's like, uh, uh, well, uh, guess I guess uh, I guess that crowbar murderer found out not to pry. Uh, and uh, I made it up. That's not that, but, but what, you and, made and, that and, up? And, and it's like... Uh, <laughs> 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 and, then, and then the lieutenant like stops him as he's about to leave the doorway. He goes like, hey! And he turns around and she goes, how's the drinking going? And he goes, yeah. One day at a time. And then he walks out, Dick Wolf. Yep. <laughs> That was an entire season. Yeah. That was all you learned about Jerry Orbach. Unless you like, but then it like makes you go, you gobble it up. Sorry, I'm babbling. Whatever. We no, no, no. Da, da, da. It's, it's a good but, point. But, but X-Files did this, a similar thing with the Smoking Man stuff where it was like, like if they had been able to hold that line, which I'm not, I, it's like, like just that idea of like, you know, every time it's like all we wanted was give me more about Smoking Man and what happened to Fox's sister and all this stuff. And it's like, how could they ever resist the, like like giving us more and more of that? But every time they gave you more of that, you're like, you're losing something. It's like ballast or something. And it's like, you want to like keep that shit up there. Um, Is that how you like, play event centered versus character driven? against each other in the course of a season. I think I could just say yes to that question, okay. but I don't I'm not sure I understand well, that. Well, like, like Twin that. Peaks the minute the, the minute they said, "Okay, this is what happened with Laura Palmer." The show was over with, but they right. went on another season. Like oh, you want to keep you want to yeah. keep well, the, the the stuff that's it's not the destination, it's the journey, you know, with any of these shows. I mean, Nick, I I can't you want to entertain that fantasy that you can do yeah. something else, but that's why I was obsessive. That was my big rift with Sony for the three years it took to fire me on Community was that I was like, yes, this is a great show. Yes, my goal is to make it fucking amazing in a way that would make you want to watch a thousand episodes of it. But in order to do that, we have to acknowledge that we we made a deal with a certain chronological devil. We said that Annie Edison is a child and that she's growing up. We said that Jeff Winger is paying a four years price for, for who he was. We're telling a story here. Like we have to get out in front of this thing so far, so fast that no one notices that we stopped having to go to community college because at some point we're going to have to. Uh, we, 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 and, and like Sony would get so mad. They'd be like, what are you talking about? Watch fucking Welcome Back Cotter and shut the fuck up. Yeah. Watch MASH, you dumb yeah. asshole. The show was 11 years longer than the war and everyone's rich. Yeah. Why are you burning our money? <laughs> Stop making television for Reddit! 
Hilarious. And I was like, it's not going to work, man. We're not going to be able to say it's Halloween for the 90th time in a row. <laughs> and Allison Breeze like, oh, uh, the forbidden fruit again. Like, it's a, it's a four-year story. But yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. Guys. Like, like, let's get out of here. I, 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 <laughs> you, you, you triggered fucking your Vietnam vet dad. <laughs> I pretended to be dead. They mounted a tripod on me. All this because somebody dropped a plate. Calm down, Dad. <laughs> Weissall, well, uh, Hot Streets. Uh, Every uh, mystery uh, that is introduced oh, shit. will get revealed in the <laughs> by the end of the season. Alert. Remember when so you will not be tricked. The history of television. Someone will know that, like, like NBC, like peaked at this point where it was like they had literally had a show called The Event. <laughs> it was that was like right before yeah. eighty percent of you were like the even kid. invested in anything because it was like you were born on Netflix and so you're kind of like but like there was like this point where it was like the squeezing of the sponge before everyone was like fuck it who's on Shark Tank like right. like the uh, they were like they were like greenlighting these crazy series because it was like the idea of event television and that's so what on at NBC God bless their sincere dopey heart was just like. Well then, literally, let's just make a show called The Event. And there's like you, if you where Google, we show like, the event YouTube, ahead of time. The, the commercials because they had this like whole teaser campaign where they, they uh, the teaser campaign was <laughs> them explaining to you what the show wasn't because it was about payoff. So they would go, the president getting assassinated is not the event. <laughs> And it's true. It's okay. like, why am I leaving the White House? I'll tell you on the way. The concert exploding is not the event. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, the, the, you were supposed to tune into the show to find out what the event was. Yeah. Like, what television was the, what reduced was the, to breakfast cereal. What was the event? What was they the event? The event was its kid. fucking cancellation after six episodes. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the event was a lot of guys that work a lot less harder than I do getting a lot more money. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to be event, bitter. They smack this kid at a backyard barbecue and it's told. <laughs> the slap. Yeah, and it's told. Oh, the slap. The slap is the event. Yeah. It's told from everybody's point of view. To, you like will find episodes. out whether or not Betty is ugly. <laughs> uh, yeah. What, what am I doing? Like, my job is to know what to say next. Everyone knows I don't. February 24th <laughs> at midnight. Hot Street Hot Season Street. 2. Who are you having on this season? Any major super celebrities? This is Hollywood. We've got, oh, the, we've got Ernie Hudson that oh, joined the cast. Yeah. I mean. I like the black it's one. It's like, you know when you watch <laughs> season one of always, It's Always Sunny? Like, I remember watching and think this show's really funny. And then Danny DeVito joins the cast. And you're like, holy shit, the show, it's weird to watch the first season. That's how I feel like with Ernie Hudson. Why, why so I heard this story. Um, maybe you can confirm this since you're an animation buff and you're friends with Ernest Hudson. Uh, I heard during that when they did the real Ghostbusters animated series that Ernie Hudson auditioned for Winston but lost it to Arsenio Hall. Is this true? I, that is true, but I, I mean, I'm just speaking for him, but I've read, I've read interviews with him where he, it, he auditioned for the part, but... When we cast him, his voice is so powerful yeah. that I think what happened was like you had all these voice actors that are really funny and talented, but Winston would be the head lead character because he's so his voice is so fucking powerful that you can't ignore it. So I think they, I feel like in the movies, Winston was kind of. Something weird happened. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like he's not really in the movie. It's that almost much. like he was over empowered, maybe by virtue of like a latent r racism. I'm not trying to high road anybody. It was the '80s, <laughs> but it was like I remember being a 10 year old kid, a 12 year old kid, watching Ghostbusters. It's like he had a flannel shirt on, he smoked cigarettes, and, and his first line is like, "Look." As long as there's a steady paycheck involved, I'll believe anything you say. Uh, and he was like, "Very." It was did that. Did, <laughs> did that skirt the line? Oh. Did we get shut down? But yeah. this shit. Uh, the month of February has shut you down. <laughs> um, uh, but but he, he had that kind of like, albeit maybe equally problematic, but from a completely different direction where he was the empowered, he was powerful, and then Ghostbusters 2, in addition to all the other weird things about it. Also, because I just, 
they, he just did an interview recently where he was talking about Ghostbusters 2, and I didn't realize this, but in Ghostbusters 2, they do this thing where they catch up with all the characters, but they don't catch up with Winston. Like, they just, he just comes back in the middle of the movie. Like, everybody has their own, like, business and stuff, like, and then... Winston yeah, I, I, that's docu- bullshit documentary where they. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Anybody watch that Lorena Bobbitt documentary? You guys <laughs> no, I do remember it though. I am stick that old. with it. I got, I got started. I started to get that's sick of it. That's the name of the documentary. <laughs> stick with it. Stick with it. <laughs> stick it back on. Um, <laughs> I, I, I swear, like, like, like I, if you're like, you, you, you get to a point where you're like, this is the 90th time they've explained to us that these people have backstories and I don't <laughs> care. But like toward the end of that thing, like it, it gets so deep and intense. Like uh, it's, it's really weird for me, especially like. Uh, yeah. Your dick was cut off. I, <laughs> I just because I remember being uh, uh, working in a blue collar city and doing improv, and like we're familiar with the Bobbits as a word that everyone would shout out as a suggestion for comedy shows. Oh yeah, that we wished that they we just not because we were feminists, because we we're we're snobs. We're like shut the fuck up. We're not doing another goddamn sketch where I mime a dick getting cut off. Fuck right. you, fuck you, fuck you. Right. So that's all I ever knew about the Bobbit thing. And it, you know, it's very interesting. Like, uh, it's a there's a documentary series. That they they unpack it for like ten hours of. Uh, it's worth it. Uh, by, by by the end of it, I'm telling you, you'll have like synapses that are like uh, reformed. It's it's it's. What it's, is the takeaway? What's the craziest thing that you learned that you didn't know back then? Uh, Without, how you know. the, our facility to ignore abuse. I, I mean, I, I really don't. It, 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 it both like it, as a culture, like like the way that we can like focus on the things that are like, <laughs> fuck it. Now the the women are shutting us down. <laughs> The patriarchy, I think, is now the, the but, but it, like like it's just like it's like oh she cut his dick off so it's that's interesting you got our attention hmm. you, yes you you cut what a did, dick off so you have our me. attention excuse me what what she cut her dick off okay uh uh and and then it's like and then it's like there's sort of like this like you you really come away with it with a with a with a complete feeling of like hey, look there's I, a lot I, more I, to I, it than just the dick getting like cut the, off the the, 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 the the unfortunate people who long since before that were like. Does anyone want to talk about equal rights and the uh, spousal abuse problem and all these things? Like, and then uh, this weird portal happens where it's like a woman cut a guy's dick off. Everyone wants to talk about penises and abuse and yeah. battery and rape. And then these these well-minded people who are like, okay, great. So now let's talk about this and like the kind of tragedy of like. Well, no, I mean, we want to talk about dicks and yeah. cutting off and like we want to, yeah. we like tablet celebrities. We don't, it, it, but it, it, it's not a downer. I, I, I think it's a. It is the beginning though, right? Of sort of like that celebrity. Well, it's, t- it's it, it starts, it starts a, conf- you know, it's like, like we're, we, before that you literally couldn't say the word penis in, uh, in media. You couldn't say the word penis wow. in New York Times, like things like that. Like, uh, uh, so it starts, it starts a thing. It's, it, it's, it's worth watching. Uh, anyways, I don't know how to end a show, so I thought I'd like recommend a, a, a Netflix thing. Uh, Waysal, uh, what do you recommend? Better be fucking not self-indulgent. Better be high-minded. Uh, I'm going to recommend JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the anime that I'm currently uh, infatuated with. It's really funny and cool, and uh, it's crazy. I remember you recommended to me, what was that Titan fucking, well, like, it, well, giants wait, wait, wait. are fighting yeah, Titans? Yeah, 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 yeah. I recommended oh. the first season of Attack on Titan, but Dan watched it without <laughs> the subtitles. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not the same show. Yeah. <laughs> But the the second season, you know, they kind of blew it a little bit. I just so. want first I season's just, amazing. First season's your less. your pitch right. was too good. You were like, there's uh, yeah. for some unknown reason, there's naked giants attacking the world, and like, and I was I like, I wanted that good. show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, You don't know how to trust a dude who is looking for like unicorn fart videos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, it's 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 about that time. It's time for everybody to start dreading Tuesday, and so we end with our our traditional song. <laughs> Yay! It's been a good show. You got your voice uh, voice thing next to you. The what? The voice pro. Yay! <laughs> it's been a pretty good show. Yeah,
you pay for them. Show them how we show them how we Don't know what the tickets cost. Hot streets Don't know how too. much money you lost, but God knows it wasn't as much as you'd pay for a bottle of cologne. Which will just make you feel more alone. Sure, you smell great, but for who? so What a great show! Show them how we do them, how we do them. Yes! <laughs> More than just a suggestion. <laughs> Literally told you what to do. MC, MC generic. <laughs> uh... I mean, he did have a point. Like, you said, I'm just coming back with a bunch of shit. He's like, show them how we do it. Show them how we do it. Show them how we do it. Show me all the blueprints. Show me how we do it. Show me how we do it. Yo, I'm obsessed with how we do it, I wanna know I gotta control everything, it's how I live and grow I'm a control freak, obsessive, compulsive I fucked your mama so hard, my dick was repulsive Oh, it came out to form John Wayne Bobbitt, that's uh, what we were talking about before Yo, stitch it back on Then I got a career in porn, then the abuse is back on I turned into a, a woman in here uh, I'm in a, a small theater uh, just rhyme any word. It's okay. Let's end the show. Yeah, yo. Black history <laughs> is the history for me. I prefer black history. I'm going out on that limb. <laughs> If you take me to a history store. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Hit, hit, okay, all right. Good night, everybody. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, and- that has been Harmontown. Uh, Brian Weissall. Weissall. Speed Demon. Rob Traub, uh, Zach McKeever. The lovely church. Sarah Hill. Nolan Fabricus. Who am I forgetting? That's it. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I've been Brandon Johnson. Drive fast, take chances. We'll see you next week. Good night. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.